What's up, Mr. Styles Advisory? Uh, sorry that I couldn't be here today. Uh, I'm going to screencast what we were going to do in class for you, though. Um, so hopefully you have that worksheet in front of you. Um, we're talking today about the Florence ideal and how people of Florence, Italy, achieved their human potential to help get you ready to do some brainstorming for your chalk festival for presentation. So as we go through this, uh, you should be taking notes and filling out the chart. And then after, we're after you're done watching this, uh, answer the questions on the bottom of the chart. So we're going to talk about Renaissance values. Um, and the key Florentine values in the Renaissance were to develop your individual potential, but also to understand what was going on around you in the world and to participate in the events um, and decisions being made in your community. And this ideal uh, is, in fact, the reason that we named our house Florence. So there you go, a little history of Florence House. Um, in Florence, uh, people who tried to achieve their potential, who we're going to talk about, uh, are Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Isabel de Est. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that last one right. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't speak Italian. But uh, those are the three people we're going to talk about. Before we start, um, here is a map of Italy. And check it out, Florence is right here. So it's up in the northern part of Italy. And uh, yeah, Florence is really uh, famous for its red tile roofs. Um, this guy in the middle here is Brunelleschi's Dome, which is kind of the most famous site on the Florence skyline. We'll start with Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, he was a painter and a sculptor, um, also a scientist. Uh, he made observations and did a lot of experiments. He, did a mi he was a military engineer, and he kind of combined science and art in a way that hadn't been done before um, and was able to predict some future inventions. This is probably one of the smartest guys kind of ever. He's most famous for creating maybe the most famous painting in the world. Uh, this is the Mona Lisa. Um, he also had some other famous paintings. Uh, this is a painting of Jesus at the Last Supper. And then he, these were some of the calculations he did, kind of talking about the proportion of humans and how long your arms are compared to your torso and to compared to your legs, things like that. Also, if you look at this, uh, the top thing here is kind of an early picture of a maybe of a helicopter um, and da Vinci also was able to write backwards so you've got some backwards da Vinci writing and then that thing on the bottom I'm not quite sure what that is it kind of looks like a giant flying dragon but these are both inventions of his that he kind of drew up schematics for but never actually created da Vinci was able to achieve his potential through a constant study of what was going on in the world through precise observations while he was doing his scientific experiments um, he worked for the government and for private citizens, so he had lots of ways to kind of move about and move closer to his potential. Uh, he also, though, had a rare combination of talent, but also the effort and the curiosity to achieve and to excel in a whole bunch of different areas. Next person we're going to talk about is Michelangelo, who looked a little bit like this. Architect, he also was a military engineer and a poet, poet but he's most famous for his painting and for his sculpture. This is a sculpture of David, which um, one of the, the more famous sculptures in the world. We've looked at this sculpture before. This is the Pieta. We looked at this in history during um, the, the day we spent talking about the, the death of Marat, that painting of the dead guy in the bathtub. He also painted the Sistine Chapel, so he painted the entire inside of this, and this is one of the, the most famous churches in the world. And then this is a picture of God reaching down from heaven and touching Adam, the first man, according to the Christian tradition. Michelangelo was able to achieve his potential through talent, through consistent and productive effort, through practice, and then just persevering and trying over and over and over again to, to create a painting or to create the best painting that he could. Next up, we have Isabel de Est, who uh, had a funny wig on in this picture. She was not actually from Florence, but was Italian and lived up to these Renaissance ideals that, of achieving human potential that were so common in Florence. She was the ruler of Mantua, um, and you'll read about Romeo and Juliet. Mantua is where Romeo was exiled to, and to have a female ruler in this time period was very rare. She was a scholar, a singer, um, very musically gifted as well as a dancer. She knew a bunch of languages and was a politician, all while raising nine children. Um, she knew all of the major figures of the Renaissance and wrote a ton about many, many, many different areas. So she was very well known for her, her knowledge on a bunch of different subjects. 
Finally, she was able to achieve her potential through her knowledge, her verbal ability, her political skill, and just these multiple skills and talents um, she was able to develop through education and practice. So now we've done a brief run through of some famous Florentines and what they were able to do to achieve their potential. Uh, it's up to you guys now to do a little brainstorming about ideas that you got from this screencast that you could portray in your chalk mural. So take the, the remainder of the period after this and try to complete the bottom of the worksheet that went along with this screencast. Thanks.